Hello wonderful people, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my neuroanatomy playlist. In previous videos we talked about all the cranial nerves. The first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve, the second one is the optic nerve. Both are sensory. 3, 4 and 6 are motor to move your eyes. 3 is the ocular motor, 4 is the trochlear and 6 is the abducens nerve. Abducens because it abducts your eyeball. 5 is the trigeminal sensation from my face. But 7 is the facial movement of my facial muscles. 8 is the vestibulocochlear for hearing and equilibrium. 9 is the glossopharyngeal which supplies the tongue, the pharynx. It is mostly sensory but it has motor supply to one muscle only which is the stylopharyngeus muscle. Then we talked about 10, the vagus or the wanderer nerve. It is very vague. It supplies your head, your neck, your thorax, and even your abdomen. We talked about the accessory nerve, which is the 11th nerve, which has two functions. Shrug your shoulder, look to the opposite side. As for today, it's the last cranial nerve, the hypoglossal nerve. When it has the word glosso in it, you know it's going to be related to the tongue. Yes, indeed, this is the nerve that moves the muscles of your tongue. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This video belongs to my anatomy playlist, which has more than 50 videos. But if you just want neuroanatomy, I have a separate playlist for that as well. Today we're discussing the 12th cranial nerve or the hypoglossal nerve. Is it motor? Is it sensory? Or both? The answer it is only motor okay is it motor somatic or motor autonomic it is motor somatic it is general somatic efferent remember that you divide your brain like this you draw a line in the sand in front is motor behind is sensory which means if the brain is giving you an order to move your tongue the order is gonna come from an area in front of the line is the hypoglossal nerve central nervous system or peripheral nervous system? The answer is all of the nerves are peripheral nervous system except the optic nerve or crane nerve 2. And we talked about this in great detail in previous videos in this neuroanatomy playlist. So the hypoglossal nerve belongs to the peripheral nervous system. Is it cranial nerve or spinal nerve? It's a cranial nerve. Is it motor, sensory or both? It is only motor. Remember that the structural unit of the nervous system is the neuron. The neuron has cell body or soma as well as an axon. A collection of somas in the central nervous system is called a nucleus. A collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system is called a ganglion. A collection of axons in the CNS is a tract. A collection of axons in the peripheral nervous system is a nerve. Today you shall hear about the nucleus of the hypoglossal nerve. What's that? That's a collection of cell bodies in the CNS, in the medulla to be specific. And today we're learning about the hypoglossal nerve itself. And what's that? A collection of axon fibers outside the CNS. So this is how it looks like. Let's suppose that this is the medulla. Amazing. We'll have the nucleus of the hypoglossal nerve in the medulla. What's that? This is a collection of somas in the CNS. Okay, each soma has axons. That's true. And the axons will leave the CNS and go peripherally like this. What's the name of a collection of axons in the PNS? That's the hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal nucleus, hypoglossal nerve. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the French toast you're talking about. The hypoglossal nerve is a purely motor nerve, which means it starts in the brain, namely the medulla, and goes outwards. It's an efferent nerve. Remember the organization of cranial nerves? Cranial nerves 1 and 2 attach to the forebrain, 3 and 4 to the midbrain, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the pons, 9, 10, 11, 12 to the medulla. Today we're talking about the last cranial nerve, which is the hypoglossal. It will leave the medulla and go outside. Just like this, starting in the medulla, and then it's going to leave the CNS and go to the peripheral nervous system until it reaches the muscles of your tongue. You can download these doozy colorful notes on my website, metacosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. Is the hypoglossal nerve somatic or autonomic? It is only somatic. Is it somatic motor or somatic sensory? It is only somatic motor, purely somatic motor. 
and because it is purely somatic motor, it will exit the brainstem anteromedially, very close to the midline. But if it was not purely somatic motor, if it was mixed, if it was lots of stuff together, like motor and sensory and autonomic and branchial, etc., etc., it will not leave anteromedially. It will leave laterally, sometimes even posterolaterally. If you really want to understand the hypoglossal nerve, bring a pen and paper and doodle with medicosis. Okay, let's draw the lovely medulla. Amazing. The pyramids are always anterior. So this is anterior. Let's draw the pyramids. Here is a pyramid. Here is a pyramid. Why do you call them pyramids? Because the pyramidal tract decussates here. Oh, got you. And then after the pyramids, what do we have? We have the olives. So here is an olive and there is an olive. Cool. Where is the nucleus for hypoglossal nerve or hypoglossal nucleus? It is here. Out of the nucleus, the nerve will emerge and it will leave the medulla by passing between the pyramid and the olive to emerge victoriously at the anterolateral sulcus of the medulla, which is a sulcus between the pyramid and the olive. Then what? Uh, then we are outside of the medulla and still inside the cranial cavity, okay? How do we leave the cranial cavity? By passing through the anterior condylar foramen to enter into the hypoglossal canal, okay? Now I'm outside. What do you want me to do? I want you to supply the tongue. So I'll pass deep to the styloid bony process. And after this, I will go towards your tongue. Let's draw your tongue here. Cool. How many muscles will you supply? I will supply all the intrinsic and the extrinsic muscles of the tongue, except the palatoglossus muscle. Who's going to supply the palatoglossus then? That's the vagus nerve. Although some textbooks will argue that the palatoglossus muscle is supplied by the cranial root of the accessory nerve. Anyway, back to the hypoglossal nerve. Okay, what are you going to supply? Well, from your mandible to your tongue, there is the genioglossus muscle. Cool. And then from the hyoid bone to the tongue, there is the hyoglossus muscle. I'll supply that as well. From the styloid process to the tongue, there is the styloglossus muscle. I will supply that too. So I supplied the genioglossus, hyoglossus, and styloglossus muscles. All of the muscles of the tongue except palatoglossus. Here's the hypoglossal nerve. It starts in the medulla from the hypoglossal nucleus and then it leaves between the pyramid and the olive through the anterolateral sulcus of the medulla. This hypoglossal nerve will leave the cranial cavity by first entering through the anterior condylar foramen and then into the hypoglossal canal. If you do not want to memorize the anterior condylar foramen, forget it. Just memorize the hypoglossal canal. Then what? Then I descend behind the styloid process or deep to it. I am related to the vagus nerve. So you can imagine a brain tumor compressing both the vagus and the hypoglossal nerve. And this area is very busy, by the way. We still have the glossopharyngeal nerve and the accessory nerve. Then what? I will go to supply the tongue. I will supply the genioglossus muscle between the geno of the mandible and your tongue. What's the geno? The word geno means knee like this. Remember the genoverum and genovalgum? This is valgum, and the one that I'm drawing right now is genoverum. Geno means knee joint, or a joint. And if you look at your mandible, it looks like this. It has a joint. This is the mental area, near the mental foramen. Oh, so this is the geno? Exactly. So I can draw a mandible like this, and from this geno, I will have the genioglossus muscle. From the hyoid bone to the tongue is the hyoglossus muscle. From the styloid process to the tongue, there is the styloglossus muscle. All of these three muscles are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. The hypoglossal nerve supplies all the intrinsic and all the extrinsic muscles of the tongue except palatoglossus, which is supplied by the vagus nerve. Remember when we talked about the sensations of the tongue and the secretion of saliva for the tongue? For these, we talked about V3, we talked about 7, and we talked about 9. But today we're focusing on the movement of the tongue. Who's that? This is cranial nerve number 12. Let me put you out of your misery, metaphorically speaking. All of the extraocular muscles are supplied by the ocular motor except two muscles. The superior oblique is supplied by the trochlear nerve and the lateral rectus is supplied by the abducens which abducts the eyeball, i.e. look laterally. 
All the muscles of the pharynx are supplied by the vagus nerve, except the stylopharyngeus muscle, which is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. All the muscles of the palate are supplied by the vagus nerve, except tensor veli palatini, which is supplied by the mandibular nerve. All the muscles of the tongue are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve, except palatoglossus, which is supplied by vagus. This one slide will save you a lot of time when you're studying. And here is a summary of all of the cranial nerves for you. Today's nerve, the hypoglossal nerve, is purely motor somatic. It is general somatic efferent. Efferent means motor and somatic means not autonomic. Somatic means voluntary movement, like moving your tongue up and down, back and forth, right and left. Do you want to learn about neuropharmacology, cardiac pharmacology, endocrine pharmacology, antibiotics pharmacology? All kinds of pharmacology are available on my website, medicosisperfectionaries.com. My courses have videos, questions, answers, and my doozy colorful notes. To learn about neurosurgery, cardiothoracic surgery, ophthalmological surgery, trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, and much more, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. Com. To learn about angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, ARDS, and much more, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. There are more than 300 premium videos available on this channel if you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.